So exponential and logarithmic, we're going to introduce an entirely new function, an entirely new button on your calculator. By the way, you want to be thinking about if you haven't, if you're, whether you're going to buy a graphing calculator or rent one from me, you, if you're planning on borrowing one from the school, you need to bring a $125 deposit check in the next couple of days. Or you can purchase one from Staples for probably about 110 bucks. I would borrow one. Anyways, we're going to be introducing an entirely new button on your graphing calculator, on your, any calculator. It's going to be the log button, but that comes later. Review of exponent laws. The parts of a power are listed below. So we call this entire thing a power. We call this thing that's at the base of the power the base. That's a convenient name. And we call this an exponent. And in grade 9 and grade 10, you learn the exponent laws. And believe it or not, yes, can you go get your book? Hustle, please. Uh, and believe it or not, as far as I know, this is it for exponent laws. I have a math degree. I didn't learn any new ones. I learned how to apply them and cleverly, and I could modify some of these. Yeah, let's bring them from now on, folks. So the first one is the product law. The product law. X to the M times X to the N. For example, Had my way, we'd all leave right now and go to a different classroom. I need to find someone who's got a block A prep. X to the M times X to the N. When you had, don't write this down, when you had something like this, X to the fourth times X to the fifth, what was the answer? Louder. So what do you do with the exponents when you're multiplying and the bases are the same? So we would write this as X to the M plus N. Now that you've seen how we're going about this, what was the rule when you were dividing exponents and the bases were the same? What did you do with the exponents? x to the m minus n. What was the rule when you had a power to a power when you had an exponent on an exponent? Do you remember? So many you multiply, so I'm going to write that as x to the m n, because if I don't write anything, that is multiply. What about if you had several things in brackets, a product being multiplied together? What did the exponent do? I'll tell you this one because you all know it. You don't quite realize what they're asking for. What we wanted you to realize was the exponent would go on to the first term and on to the second term. It would go on to everything. And if there was a third term, as long as there wasn't a plus sign in between them, if there was a plus sign, then you had to foil with brackets and all that stuff. That's a different, entirely different rule. Uh, power of a quotient. This is also the same idea. What we want you to realize is that if you have a fraction all to an exponent, that's really the same as. Change ink, Mr. Dewitt. That's really the same as the top term to the exponent divided by the bottom term to the exponent. Oh, but we're being fussy. The denominator can't be zero. Why? Because you can't divide by zero. Why? I think I showed you my little 6 divided by 2, 6 divided by x, little shtick will needed reciprocal. And then we had this. You did most of this in grade 9, I believe. And then we had the integral exponent rule. I think you do this in grade 9, but you do it more in grade 10. What did a negative exponent mean? How could I write this as a positive exponent? One over the x. In fact, here's how I teach my grade tens. I always tell them that a negative exponent acts like an elevator and causes that term to change levels. So this would be, oh, use a different color, Mr. Do it. One over x to the m. You see, my rule is more general because if I gave you this, I would say a negative exponent acts like an elevator and it causes it to change levels. It's in the basement. Now it's on top. 
In fact, you're going to hear me frequently say during this lesson, elevator. What I'm really saying is move this stuff up and down. And then the very last one you learned in grade 10 is what a fractional exponent means. For example, don't write this down, but something like this, 8 to the 2 thirds. I'll give you a hint. It involves that symbol suddenly showing up. And the 8 ended up there. It gave you certain roots. Yeah, you remember? I'll give you a hint. It's either the square root of 8 cubed or the cube root of 8 squared. Which one? Say it louder. You're right. So Brett said it's the cube root of 8 squared, which it is. Now, how, really, kids kind of remember this. The real issue is, does the 2 go there or there? Does the 3 go there or there? Allow me to show you what my grade 10 teacher taught me all these years ago. She taught me flower power. Say what? She said when you have that fraction, the top is the flower and the bottom is the root of the flower. And the root goes to the root and the flower goes to the power. And so she always gave us the little thing called flower power for us to remember what goes where. You can use whatever you want to, but you got to keep straight what goes with what. So in our generic rule down here, this would end up being flower to the power, root to the root. And then it says, or what we want to write here is this to the M. What it's saying here, Trevor, is look, if it's easier to do the root first and then do the exponent, go ahead. If it's easier to do the exponent first and then do the root, go ahead. The order here doesn't matter. Pick whichever makes the math easier. So it really depends on the numbers that are there. Those are your exponent rules. That's it. Let's use them. This says write each expression without brackets and with positive exponents. Here I have two things being multiplied together. I have a 1 half and I have a y. The 1 half is a fraction. Is this a fraction? Yes, it is because it's over what? It's invisible, but it's over what? See, here's how I would handle this then. I would say to myself, self, on the top I have a 1. On the bottom I have a 2. And this thing here is a negative exponent. Put it on the elevator. That's how I would do that. I don't let myself get confused with, how do I multiply fractions? I don't need to, one term at a time, what's on top, what's on the bottom. B. Now, there is an order of things that I do. And this is Mr. Duick's method. I have not yet seen this in any textbook. I tried to suggest this to some math teachers, because by the way, I think it's an easy one. I can do almost all these in my head. I'm going to teach you how to do that. Technically, my method violates bed mass. Technically. But it will always work anyways. It's one of those times when the order of operations, you can do it in the wrong order and still get the same answer. And by doing so, it's way, way easier. So I'm going to say, try my method. Up here, we have the exponent rules. I always do these two first, always. I'm always looking for a power to a power. Is there a power to a power? Is there a power to a power? That's my checklist. I always do this next. I always get rid of any negative exponents and put them on the elevator. I cause them to change level. By doing that, I end up with something that I can almost always do the rest of it in my head in one step by cheating cleverly. So when I go to B, I say, are there any power to a power? Are there any brackets with exponents outside of them? Say no. Say no. So I, I did that check, though. Now, elevator. Does the 5 have a negative exponent on it? Leave it. Does the X have a negative exponent on it? Elevator. I've taken care of the top. Does the Y have a negative exponent on it? Elevator. Have I taken care of every term? Good, I'm done. C. 
see. I see brackets. Are there any exponents outside of the brackets? No. I'm going to do elevator first always. And this is where you could argue that I'm starting to violate some bed mass rules. But I want to show you why this makes it so much easier. What I'm trying to get rid of here, Haley, is the negative exponent divided by a negative exponent where you're supposed to go a minus minus and what the heck? I'm going to ditch that totally. Watch. I'm going to say I like the 4. I like the x cubed. I like the y. I like the 2. x to the 4th ends up down there. I like the y squared. You okay with that, Haley? Now, here's why that makes life so much easier. That one step I will almost always write out, and I can now do the rest in my head. First of all, final answer, numbers by numbers. What's my coefficient going to be? Can you see it? See the 8? How many x's on top, grand total? 3. How many x's on the bottom, grand total? 4. How many x's left and where? Did you hear me ever say negative in there? And that we, we bypassed the whole negative exponent. At what the heck do I do? And we said, look, I know there's going to be a single x on the bottom. How many y's on top, grand total? Three. See them? See them? How many y's on the bottom, grand total? Trick question. None. How many y's left? And where? Three on the top. That's how I do these. I always get rid of negative exponents as soon as I can. And then I just say, how many on top, how many on the bottom, how many left and where? And Trevor, it gets rid of the whole, uh, do I do a minus minus here? Or do I, do, what if I have a negative exponent on the bottom? I, I, I never will. Never will. Why not make my life easy? Also, that's where I'm going to make my most stupid mistakes. So why not get rid of that step? Got to be full disclosure, though. Technically, somewhere along the way, if you're paying attention, we violated bed mass. Don't worry about it. It'll always work. Yes. To get the x. Okay, so we're looking here. How many x's on top grand total? There's three of them. See them? How many x's on the bottom grand total? Four of them. When I cancel, how many will be left and where? One left on the bottom. Okay? Now, the see, the other way you could have done this is you would have gone, well, these are being multiplied, so I add the exponents, so I have an x and negative 1. What the heck do I do with the x and negative 1? Oh, I better put that as a fraction. I, I, I managed to avoid all that and do it in one step, which I think is a better method. Trust me. D. I don't know how your Math 10 teacher taught you, but I'm going to guess that your Math 10 teacher might have told you to go, well, these are being divided right here, so you're going to go negative, two, uh, negative 3 minus. Forget that. I've got no use for confusing myself. First of all, are there brackets with exponents on the outside? No? Good. Elevator. Uh, let's change colors, Mr. Duick. Uh, the 24 I'm happy with, the m to the 5th I'm happy with. I do not like that p. I'm going to put it down there. Elevator. I'm good with the q to the 4th. I'm good with the negative 4. Wait a minute, isn't that an elevator? That's not a negative exponent, Ryan. That's just a negative number, right? Negative exponent moves levels. A negative number stays where it is. I'm good with this m to the 4th. I'm good with this p squared. But this q to the negative 2, elevator. Move it to the top. By doing that, I can go to my final simplified answer now in one step. Ready, Ellen? Numbers first. I got a 24 on top. I got a negative 4 on the bottom. What is 24 divided by negative 4 on top? How many m's on top, grand total? 5. How many m's on the bottom, grand total? 4. How many m's left and where? How many q's on top, grand total? Six. How many q's on the bottom, grand total? None. How many left and where? Six on top. Which letter haven't I tackled yet? Have you kept track? Yeah, okay. It's easy to keep track. How many p's on top, grand total? None. How many on the bottom, grand total? Five. How many left and where? Five left on the bottom. And that avoids the whole minus, minus, dividing by a negative, what that gets rid of it. And that's simplified. 
E. Is there an exponent outside the brackets in E? Then we do that first, and I remind myself, Asar, that it goes on to everything. I usually draw those in because it takes all of one second. It's going to be 3 to the third, x to the, to the what? 6, y to the what? 9. I would accept this. They might write 3 to the third is 27. What's the rule for that? Honestly, the rule is if you can do it in your head, write it as a number. If you can't do it in your head, don't write it as a number. 27 x to the 6th, y to the ninth. F. Is there an exponent outside the brackets? Elevator. I'm happy with the 12. It doesn't have a negative exponent. I don't like that b to the negative a half. I'm going to move it to the denominator. I've got a 3 down here. I'm good with that. And I've got a b down here. I'm good with that. Okay. Numbers first. I got a 12 on top. I got a 3 on the bottom. What's 12 divided by 3? Okay, by the way, don't write this down, Carly. Just watch. What if this question instead had the 3 on top and the 12 on the bottom? I'd still have a 4, but where would it be? On the bottom? Okay, so in other words, you're kind of reducing fractions. You know, keep stuff in its proper place. Whoop. That jumped suddenly. So if I simplify this, there's going to be a 4. How many Bs on top? None. How many Bs on the bottom, grand total? 1 and a half. Can you write that as an improper fraction? Because 1 and a half, I don't write this down. This is bad math matters because also you can't tell if that's 1 and a half or 1 to the 1 half power. It's really awkward to tell. So what is 1 and a half as an improper fraction? 3 over 2? So you could do that. Now, I don't know what answer they're looking for. We could also, because I have a fractional exponent, we could flower power it. We could go 4 all over the root symbol. The b goes there. Root to the root. Flower to the power. Now, technically, you don't need to put the 2 there. 2 means square root. We decided a long time ago as math nerds that because square root is the most common root, if you leave it blank, we assume it's a square root. We assume there's a 2 there. That's why you never bothered writing a 2 there, but there technically is. Turn the page. says, find the exact value of the following and verify with a calculator. Okay. 9 to the negative 3 flower power. 1 over 9 cubed. No calculator. What's 9 to the third? Hmm. Ah, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you turn back one page to the previous page, is the facing page a blank page or not? Yes? Page, what page number is that? Turn to page 90. Write this down on page 90. Expo exponents worth memorizing this test the log test the first half of it will be non calculator i'm going to expect you to memorize certain exponents well i'm fibbing memorize isn't quite the right word tyler i'm going to expect you to recognize certain numbers and when you see them you should know hey that's 2 to something or 3 to something Here's what you need to have memorized. Write these down, please. 2 squared, 2 cubed, 
two to the fourth, two to the fifth, two to the sixth. With no calculator, what is two squared? Four. What's two cubed? Don't you dare say six. Eight. What's two to the fourth? I'll give you a hint. It's this times two. Sixteen. What's two to the fifth? I'll give you a hint. It's this times two. Thirty-two. Two to the sixth is sixty-four. What do I mean by you need to have these memor memorized? Mitsu, when you see a 32, you better right away say, I know that's 2 to some power. And then I can figure it out. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, 4096, 8192, 16. I, I can keep going if I need to. They're a bit more familiar to you guys because they're also computer numbers because computers are all powers of two. You may have noticed that any RAM chip is actually a power of two. You need to know this. Three squared, three cubed, three to the fourth, three to the fifth. What is three squared? Nine? What is three cubed? Twenty-seven. What's three to the fourth? And I'll give you a hint. It's actually three squared squared. It's nine times nine. That's what it is. Eighty-one. In your head, multiply eighty-one times three to get three to the fifth. And we all get 243, don't we? 8 times 3 is 24. 1 times 3 is 3. 24, 3. You need to know this. Four squared, four cubed, and sort of four to the fourth. It pops up once in a while. Four squared is 16. Four cubed, we all know, is... 64. Four to the fourth is 64 times four. You need to know this. And for the rest of them, really, all you need to know are the squareds and the cubes. So we're going to fill up the rest up to 10. 5 squared, 25. 5 cubed, it's 25 times 5, boys and girls, 125. You need to know 6 squared and 6 cubed. 6 squared is 36. What's 6 cubed? Well, it's going to be 36 times 6. 216. And again, Brian, when I say you need to know, what I'm really saying is from now on for the rest of the year, when you see the number 216, right away you should be thinking, hey, that's an exponent of something. And oh, I'll give you a hint. If they end in 6, they're almost always an exponent of 6 except for 16. But every power of 6 ends in a 6. Don't believe me? Play with your calculator. You need to know 7 squared and 7 cubed. 7 squared, 49. 7 cubed, look up. It's not 49 times 7 if you're doing it in your head. It's 50 times 7 minus 7 because 50 is a much nicer number to do math with. What's 50 times 7? 350 minus 7, because it's really 49 times 7. 343. I get 243 and 343 mixed up. You know why? Because they're both 143. And they're both from prime exponents, and I can't find... Anyways, I've just given you a way, though, that if you ever need to find 7 to the third, it's 49... No, 50 times 7 minus 7. You need to know... 
that. 8 squared, we know, 64. Also happens to be 2 to the 6th power. Also happens to be 4 to the 3rd power. 8 cubed, 64 times 3. I'll be honest, this one you don't really need to know because I don't have it here. This is one of the ones that when I see it, I recognize it, and I go, that's 8 to some power. So somebody on your calculator, was eight, what is 8 to the 3rd power? 512, that's right, 512, which is also a power of 2. Why is anything that has an 8 in it a power of 2 as well? Because 8's a power of 2. And you need to know 9 squared. Oh, Mr. Dilek, you've been alternating colors. Why not continue? 9 squared and 9 cubed. 9 squared is 81. 9 cubed, which brings us to the question that we were just doing, I think, by the way. 9 cubed is, <clears throat> look up, 80 times 9 plus one more 9. What would 80 times 9 be? 720 plus one more 9. Again, it's worth tr memorizing them. Well, hang on. Carly, once you're done yawning, when we get to the test, if you don't have them memorized, you better write them out. Most of you will just memorize them because we're going to be using all of these so often during this unit, and you're going to get tired of having to look them up or go to your calculator. Your natural teenage lazy streak will take over, and your brain will say, to you, look, memorize these stupid things because I'm tired of looking these up. So it will probably take care of itself. Back to the notes. So I'm guessing, Mr. Duke, that this is 1 over 729. Why, yes, it is. B. Flower power. The what root of what to the power of what? The fourth root of 81 to the third. I said to you, the order that you do this doesn't matter. You could go 81 cubed first and then take the fourth root of that. Do you know 81 cubed in your head? Then, you know what? Let's do the fourth root first. What's the fourth root of 81? Uh, some number to the fourth power equals 81. I'll give you a hint, turn back a page. 81 appears twice. In one of those columns, it appears next to something to the fourth power. Huh? This is actually the same as three to the third. Oh, and three to the third I know is, don't say nine, 27. C, 25 to the zero. What's anything to the zero? One. Why? I have a lovely explanation, but another time. D. You know what I'm going to do first in D? Elevator. This is 1 over 16 to the 1 half. Now, this is flower power, but this is a shortcut that's just worth remembering. One half as an exponent is a very special root. What is one half as an exponent? What root is one half as an exponent? Yeah, this is one over the square root of 16. I'm, we're going to write this in our notes. This is one over the square root of 16. But if you jumped straight to the final answer of one over four without writing this intermediate step, I'd be happier. There are two exponents that are fractions that are worth memorizing. A one-half power, which is square root, and what was a one-third power? A one over three power? Cube root. We're going to use those pretty interchangeably whenever we want. Skip this. Do this. Here is where my method that I've showed you will start to make you a wee bit happier. You'll say, oh, Dilek, you should publish this. I tried bringing it up at a math meeting, but because it technically violates bed mass, they refused. Okay. 
So I'll just continue to do experiments. I had to get all the right answers. The left works. What was the first thing that I said we looked for? Is there an exponent outside the brackets? Yes, there is. That exponent's going to go on everything. It's going to be 4 to the negative 3x to the negative 3y to the positive 6. The next thing I told you to do was elevator, always. Get rid of negative exponents. This 4 is going to move to the bottom. This x to the third is going to move to the bottom. This y to the sixth is done. Is 4 to the third one of the ones that I told you to memorize? Then I'd expect you to actually not write 4 to the third. What is 4 to the third power? I would probably, if I gave you this as a multiple choice, this is what I would have as the answer. And this is what I would prefer you to write. B. Ah, don't panic. First thing you go look for, are there brackets with exponents outside the brackets? Yeah? So take care of those first. Negative A, B to the negative 6, all over. B to the negative 1, A to the 8. Right? Power to a power rule. Sorry. Yeah, I'm right. I missed a fifth. I missed a five. Let's try that. There. Don't forget your exponents. Now what? Elevator. Is this a negative exponent? No. It's a negative number. In fact, what number is sitting right there? It's invisible. Yeah, I'm going to just treat that as a negative 1 kicking around, but I'm not going to write it. I'm just going to remember it. I'll drop the negative down. I'm okay with that a to the fifth because it's not a negative exponent. b moves down there. What about this b here? Elevator moves to the top. What about this A stays? And now we can go to our final answer. First of all, numbers. What number is on top sitting there? A negative 1. What's on the bottom? A 1. What's negative 1 divided by 1? There's going to be a negative kicking around. How many A's on top grand total? Brett, how many A's on top grand total? How many on the bottom grand total? How many left and where? See, I'm trying to avoid the whole having to go 5, take away 8, get an A to the negative 3, and then freak out because of the We don't need to. There's 3 left on the bottom. How many Bs on top? How many on the bottom? How many left and where, Eric? Can I leave my answer like this? No. What now do I need to put on top because there's nothing there? Now I have to put the one in. But I waited until I had to. I was kind of hoping the letter would end up there. You can see, Ryan, what are we doing? We're avoiding negative exponents. I get rid of them here, and I never bring them back. Don't need to. C. Is there an exponent outside the bracket? Yes. Oh, it's a fraction, so that exponent's going to go on to everything on the top and everything on the bottom. It's going to go here, 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 and here. I'm going to get this. 3 to the negative 2. x to the negative 6. All over. 4 to the negative 2. y to the positive 4. Now what? Elevator. Does this stay or does this change levels? And do you mind, can I write it as a 9 right away because I'm pretty sure that's what it's going to become? Does this stay or does it change levels? Does this stay or does it change levels? And I'm going to write it as a 16 on the top if that's okay. Why do the fourth stays where it is? Is there any simplifying I can do? Does 16 over 9 reduce? No. Are there any x's on top or y's on Oh, this is done. 
one line of work. D. I see two big brackets. Is there an exponent outside any one of them? Then let's rewrite the one with no bracket. I'm just going to say, okay, let's rewrite this bad boy here. This is a negative, an 8, an x to the 8, a y to the 5th, a 25, an x squared, a y. And this is going to be, this 2 is going to go on to everything. So it's going to be a 25. Where'd the 25 come from? 5 squared. It's going to be an x to the 6th, a y to the 18th all over. What's a negative squared gone? Because that's really a negative 1 in front of the 4. I treated it separately. So a negative squared is going to be gone. A 4 squared. 16. X squared Y to the 10th. And we're going to go right to the final answer in one fell swoop. Really? Yeah. Hey, look closely. How many 25s on top, grand total? One. How many 25s on the bottom, grand total? How many left and where? Right? I just saved myself a bunch of math because I noticed that. Can you do that, Mr. Duick? This is all being multiplied now. So this is one big fraction on top and one big fraction on the bottom. Heck yeah. Let's do numbers. So the total numbers that I have on the top is what? Oh, first of all, how many negatives on top, grand total? One. How many negatives on the bottom, grand total? Is my answer going to be negative or positive? Oh, don't use red, Mr. Duick. Back to blue. Let's do the numbers. The top numbers simplify to an 8. See it? The bottom number is simplified to uh, 16. See it? What is 8 over 16 in lowest terms? By the way, do you think if there had been like a 3 here, like other numbers, could you have handled figuring out what the top number was just by multiplying it in your head? And what the bottom number was just multiplying it in your head? Yeah. Now, you ready? How many x's on top grand total? See them? 14. See them? How many x's on the bottom grand total? Four. How many left and where? How many y's on top grand total? 23. Yes. How many y's on the bottom? 11. How many left and where? Think about that. We did that in one line. It's not bad. I think my method works pretty good. I don't know why they don't teach it that way. Yes? Isn't what Y12? Isn't what Y12? I don't know. Let me see. How many Ys to the uh, 23, 11? I think 12. Ellen, you get a candy, but later. I can't do math. In my, I'm so bragging about doing all the math in my head. Apparently, it was the grade 1 math that tripped me up, subtracting. Turn the page. I think turn the page, or did I miss a question? Nope. Okay. The last skill. By the way, I don't know what happened when I sent this, printed this. It looks like it chopped off the edges, but it didn't chop off the questions, so I'll fix this another time. But today's notes, it doesn't look like the, pa the page numbers seem to have got chopped off, but you know where we are. It says, uh, changing the base. What was the base of the exponent? I think the base of the exponent was the number that was in the base of the, yeah, down here. One of the skills we're going to pick up this unit is we want to be able to take one base and write it as a different base. And that's also why I had you write all those exponents on the previous page, all those powers. Easier to show you than to try and explain how we're going to do it. It says this, convert each of the following to the base indicated. Write that as base 3. What this is saying is this. Instead of a 9 to the 2x, I would like a 3 here. How can I write a 9 as a 3? 
is that still 9 to the 2x? Except now I have power to a power. See it? If I simplify it, not 3 to the 4x. I have just rewritten the base 9 as a base 3. Believe it or not, that's actually going to be useful. We're going to be able to solve certain equations that we were unable to solve before. B. 125 to the 2 minus x, rewrite that as base 5. Okay. The exponent is 2 minus x, but instead of 125 right there, I want a 5 to a 5 to what? I heard 3 and I heard 4. Which one? It's 5 to the 3rd. Now what? Ooh, uh, power to a power, and I guess it's going to be 3 times that and 3 times that. I think my final answer is going to be 5 to the 6 minus 3x. Apparently, 5 to the 6 minus 3x is the same as 125 to the 2 minus x. C. 8 times 16 to the x power to base 2. By the way, you can't go 8 times 16 and get, say, oh, 8 times 16 is uh, 200. No, you can't. 128, sorry, but you still can't. Why? Because that would be violating bed mass. That's got an exponent on it. This one doesn't. You have to do exponents first. Instead, I'm going to write this as a 2 and a 2 to the x. How can I write an 8 as a 2? Too cute. How can I write a 16 as a 2? I'll give you a hint. 2 to the 4th. Now I can take this and simplify a little bit further. I have power to a power, yes? So I can write this as 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 4x. I can do one more thing, though. What's the base in the first bracket? What's the base in the second bracket? Are you saying my bases are the same and I'm multiplying? What do I do with exponents when my bases are the same and I'm multiplying? Ah! This is actually 2 to the 3 plus 4x. Apparently, that's the same as 8 times 16 to the x. This is kind of fun, Mr. Do it. Yeah, I, I, just, not really, Mr. I, okay, fine. D. This to base 2. Okay. It's going to be a 3x. Now, I didn't tell you to memorize this one. Everybody put your pencils down. Everybody get your fingers out. Close your fingers. Ready with me? 2, thumb, 4, 8, 16, 32, double it, double it. 128, double it. 256, double it. 512 is 2 to what power? This is why I didn't have you remember. The 2s are the most common ones, and technically you should know the first 9. You know what? If you can just double things, and most of you can, you can get there. 2 to the 9. Really, that's going to be 1 over 2 to the 27x. But we're not done. This is not base 2. Technically, you could argue, and I would agree with you, Caitlin, this is base a half because the 2 is on the bottom. It would be wonderful if there was some type of operation that caused it to change levels like an elevator, as it were. How could I get the 2 to the top? Introduce a negative exponent. This is the same as 2 
to the negative 27x because I would have elevated it to get it down there. There, that's a base 2, not a base 1 half. The last one, probably the toughest one, but nerdily cool. <clears throat> What do they want me to write this as? Base what? 2 over 3. They want me to write it as the base of a fraction, which probably means they gave me a fraction in the brackets. Did they? Can I write the 16 as a 2? Can I write the 81 as a 3? Oh, that's not so bad. In fact, I'm going to argue this. First of all, I would probably write the x plus 5 because I feel better. It's no longer blank. 16 is 2 to the what? 81 is 2 to the what? Is, or is 3 to the what? 4. Oh, did you say the same exponent for both of them? See, I think I can write this. 2 thirds to the 4th. Is that not 16 over 81? And they did that on purpose. They wanted to make sure I had the same exponent for the top and bottom. Because otherwise, how could I possibly write it as a two-thirds if I had different exponents which wouldn't simplify properly? Joel, do I have a power to a power now outside the brackets? Do I have an exponent? And inside the brackets, do I have an exponent? Say yes. So I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to get two-thirds all to the power of? 4x plus 20. By the way, you know what the most common mistake here? Instead of writing 20, what do kids write? They put a 5 because they're in such a rush. Yes, I'll have that as an answer to pick from on the multiple choice. In fact, I'll put that as A, the first answer you spot. Check your math. Okay. So there is a review of exponent laws with Mr. Dulick's handy dandy shortcut for never having to deal with stupid negative exponents because I don't think you really need to. And a quick review of not review, quick brand new of changing the base of objects. What's your homework? Um, I'm going to go 1A, 1B, 1D, 1E. Abd. -uh. Two is good. Okay, we're with me now. It's like it seems like I've lost some of you already. Stay with me. I'm skipping three. Woohoo! Four A is good. Four B is good. Four C is good. And D. Four E. Oh, I like that. Four F. I like that. I skipped D. I really need to slow down. Really? Come on. Stay with me here. I'm calling them out. Number five. We're on number five, so you should have turned the page by or be on the next. Number five. Uh, I think I like. Uh, well, let's see. We got easier ones and nastier ones. You know what? I'll go five A, C, E, and F. Six all. Eight. Oh wow! Look, at I have oh ten. I gotta gotta do ten. Fractions and negatives and brackets. Oh my! Yeah, live with it. You'll be fine. It's not as bad as you think. 